Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are having a great day today. I'm going to share with you a little bit more about how to really get going with a mobile store cart. Um, a lot of you who have not yet seen uh, my mobile cart videos, please check the link here for the original rolling cart. There's a part one and a part two. I'll put the link right here. And if you've already seen that one, my most current cart is my Saya Beauty case, which I will put the link up here. Um, and you can check that out after this video. So we're gonna start with just some basics. People are asking me, what do you put in a cart? How do I start uh, with a cart? And I think the first thing you need to ask yourself is, in your business, is there either a particular category that you're not diving into that you wanna get into? So maybe you're not already selling a lot of makeup products and beauty products, and that's something that you're passionate about, but you've just been afraid to like kinda take that leap and jump and try that might be a good starting point for you to be like, I'm gonna do a beauty kit. For me, that's my passion. I love the makeup products. I love, of course, all our products, but that for me is something where it's an impulse pie for my customers and I know they like to see it in person. So the carts worked great for me. But I will tell you that when I first started with a cart, it wasn't always the beauty products. I started with always carrying at least my bath oil, I always had some deodorants, uh, men's and women's, and I didn't go crazy just in my in my car. I always kept a couple men's deodorants, a couple female deodorants. I always had at least two bottles of the bath oil. I always had a few shower gels, and those were good for little free gifts here and there for customers uh, that might have bought a certain amount. I wanted to put that in their bag or impulse buy, you know, $3 shower gel. And let's see, um, the Skin So Soft, the shower gels, the bug guard are always a must, must, must that you have to have in your car. Um, and if you're trying to get started in a certain category, um, you know, I think those are staples for an Avon rep that, you know, have a few of those, you know, the deodorants, things that people regularly need, or when they think Avon, they think skin so soft bug guard, they think skin so soft bath well. So you might want to start with keeping those few things on hand. And again, you don't have to have 30 of them, just one or two bottles of that. And one or two cans of the bug guard product and then pick and choose a few other things that you think that you can keep in stock uh, to sell on spot for on spot sales. Again, my cart started with just the regular teachers like rolling cart and then I saw the need for the beauty products. So I would carry in the bottom part those basic items but then I would also do like the fragrances that would come out and we would get like either prefer preview or I would do a stock up. I would keep those in there because um, the bottom portion of that cart was big enough to carry skincare and, and the other things. I loved doing that. I think, again, it's important and it still stays in my car with the bath oil, the bug guard, uh, a few shower gels, a few deodorants. That stays always in the car. But my niche, and this is what you need to find, my niche is the beauty products. I love to wear them. I love to share it. Um, I feel like it was a category that I'm very passionate about. So that's the first thing you need to identify is find out where is your passion. Of course, I'm sure all of you are like, well, I love all the Avon products, but maybe there's something specifically that either, again, you haven't tapped into and want to, or you're already doing like really great in skincare. If you're doing like say really great in skincare, um, and you find that that is something that your customers clamor for, then I would have the other type of rolling kit and I would make sure that when new products come out, I was getting the skincare so I can get it into their hands for instant delivery. Um, then you could of course expand your categories. If you're really good at fragrance, then you should be making sure your cart has the fragrance in it um, and, and work that angle and then that opens the door maybe to beauty or to the other parts. So. You need to identify that first. That's number one, because people are asking me, I don't know how to start a card. I don't know how much do I need to invest in it? What should I put in it? Um, so to reiterate, every single representative should have one to two bottles of bath oil. That is just my opinion. I feel like that's what people flag you down for. Usually if, if they're going to be a brand new customer and they see your car signs, they're like, do you have bath oil or bug guard? And so if you have that, then you're apt to be able to say, oh, and I also have fragrance and a few other things if you'd like to look at some of my cash and carry. So for those of you just starting and you're like, well, I don't have a lot of money to invest, then keep one bottle of the bath oil, 
one or two cans of the Bug Guard. And then, you know, like I said, I do, uh, you know, two men's deodorants, two women's deodorants, uh, da, 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 a few shower gels. And then for my makeup, everybody's asking me, well, what if I'm just getting started in makeup? What do I purchase? So here is my list for makeup for you to start. You need to have mascara. Um, I find that most people don't want brown, so I usually just get the standard black. I get a couple different. If you're just starting out, start with three to five, okay? Make it small, look for the stock ups, find your favorite, maybe get a couple different formulas. Right now, I mean, sometimes they're two for $7.99. That's a good time to stock up on mascara. So mascara is a great start. And then black eyeliner and brown eyeliner. Those are two staple items that women need. So even if you just get two black and two brown and start with that, you're not overstocking yourself. Um, look for specials on that as well. There might be a three for a certain price, any three, four, or they might be, you know, any two, four. So find the best pricing in that as well. Whenever I'm stocking my beauty kit, I'm going to find the lowest prices. So then therefore I can turn that around and offer my, my clients the lowest book pricing. Um, for example, when they're two for $7.99 on a mascara, uh, I always keep mascaras in my cart for $5 because even on a, the two for $7.99 is an incredible deal. Um, but on a regular basis, you don't see mascara for $5 for one mascara. So I do keep that flat $5 and I will always stock up when I see it the lowest, lowest possible two for whatever kind of a deal um, or if there's any stock ups in the demo. So to reiterate on the makeup, Couple, some couple mascaras, you need black and brown eyeliner is a must. You may wanna pick up one eye makeup remover, one or two eye makeup removers. That's kinda of optional, um, but it's a good add-on sale, especially if you can pick it up for like 99 cents, it's a good add-on sale. The makeup wipes, I keep those, cause that's a good add-on sale. When you wanna really, and you can start with just something as simple as that. Then you can start to go into picking up glaze wear. Right now all the lipsticks are two for 10.99. So that's a good time to buy. Or when they're $4.99, that's a good time to buy. The When the eyeshadows are $4.99, that's a good time to buy. So I just expanded it and expanded it. You figure out your budget. If you're doing makeup, figure out your budget and start with the basic, basic items that you know women are gonna run out of and need and the ones that are the easiest to sell. Once you have the makeup customers coming, then they're gonna to wanna to see your cart again next time and be like, do you have colors of that glimmer stick? That's when you go back and you reevaluate what you've already sold and replace what you need to replace and then start picking up some other things. So for example, I have a couple hair salons that I service. The women there, if you've been into hair salons, you know that they're always changing with the trend, right? A lot of hairdressers love to change up their hairstyles. They're going from one color to the next. They like to cut it short long because they're setting trends also for the clients coming in going, oh, I want hair like hers, okay? So um, the hairdressers that I'm servicing, a lot of them, you know, are very, um, they like the bold, they're younger, they like the bolder pops of color, and they're very trendy, um, you know, hairdressers they like to you know one day i'll go in and they've got purple hair one day i go in and this side shaved and the rest is long i mean it's just a, they're just that's the customer base so i look at that and i look at what they purchase and then i know when i am looking through the book that i need to pick the hottest pink the hottest deep red and purples i'm going to pick the hot shades that they've purchased for me before and from what i can see in the trend in the salon if it is fall time, then I'm gonna look for, you know, uh, that vampy dark purple is, is a gorgeous color for fall. Um, I'm gonna look at the smoky shades for the eyes. I'm gonna try to go with the trend and if it's spring, then it's coral pops and bright pinks. And so you can look at the time of year, but you can also look at your client base of who's looking at your kit. If you had older women looking at your kit, a bright, bright, bright pink lipstick or a wild, wild eyeshadow, it depends on the person, some may love it, but I'm just saying, if, you're, if you were visiting a senior center and you had all those wild and crazy colors, that might not appeal to that base, that's all I'm saying. You, they may want softer colors. Um, if, if they were asking you for recommendation, I don't think you would put on your grandmother um, a, you know, like I said, to each his own. You might have some grandmothers that love that wild color. I mean, makeup is something that you know, you should have fun with and, and there really shouldn't be a, you know, set like you need to wear this because you're this age and you need to wear this for that age. So I don't want to 
you know, everybody's watching this. I don't want you to think that that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if somebody asked you for an opinion and you look at this customer and she says, I like such and such, you can kind of look at the age range of what that group is wearing trend wise. Let's look at it that way and say, okay, these are the softer colors. This is what's going to look better on this age range. And from what I've sold, I can identify that cozy mauve and this color and that color and this color blush are all going to be colors that this customer base that I have are going to be more interested. Whereas my salon is going to want the more metallic shadows, uh, a lot of the matte bold lipsticks. It's just going to be a different base. So you need to look specifically at your customer base and decide um, if you are 20 years old, then most of your customers are going to probably be, uh, maybe a lot of them are your age and you've got a different, you know, it, it really just depends is basically what I'm saying on who you're serving. But I keep in my kit to be fair, because I don't know when I go in that salon, the hairdressers themselves purchase, but sometimes their customers are listening and I could have any type of range of customers sitting in those chairs. And that's where, um, as I've expanded the kit, I've been able to put more colors in it and be able to offer a wide variety of, of, of different items for somebody that's just starting. I don't want you to feel like you have to have all those colors. So that's why I'm saying, uh, pick and choose according to your customer base what you feel um, you know is trending for them what when you see them what colors are they mostly wearing you know get their opinion before you place the order and you know try to go that way so that's my advice for that if you're doing the makeup you know figure that out if you're going to do um, a fragrance cart or you want to do makeup and then add uh, these other items to it then you expand your whole store. I still do bring in the So Very Sophie. I put it in the top, for example, whatever fragrance is hot. And while I'm doing makeup, I say, by the way, this new fragrance has come out. Here's a sample. I let them try it. And then that segues the makeup sales into fragrance sales. But you've got to pick, I think, your niche of what you feel most comfortable um, selling and again if you're stepping out of your comfort zone into something new and it is the makeup then you got to wear it you got to wear it you got to play with it you got to try it I'm wearing a different eyeshadow today than I don't normally ever wear and um, you know I played with it and I was like these aren't colors I would normally well it's a little more smoky I don't know if you could see it it was like the blue it was like the smoke and fog matte palette and it's not but it came out I mean it came out pretty nice and I like it and it's different and it allows my customers to see that I'm not always just wearing a neutral. I'm wearing, you know, different pop of color. So I think that's important too. So um, identifying your category, you know, figure that out. And then from there, when it comes to purchasing a cart, people are like, I don't know what to buy. I don't know, um, you know, do I need to have this something this elaborate? You need to think of a couple things before you make a purchase. If again, you're just starting out, you can go to Walmart, you can buy a $20 rolling cart and just start with that and buy a few, um, snap cases from like the craft store to put your liners and stuff in and carry it just roll that around you don't have to have anything real fancy start it with something like that then maybe you decide okay now i want to do like a tackle box and put that on top and use that like her first cart um and that wouldn't cost very much to set something like that up if you're looking for more of a professional look where you're doing like just the beauty or maybe you're filling it just with fragrance, again, the size on that's gonna be different. So if you're doing makeup, then you're gonna want the drawers and you're gonna wanna be able to showcase the products that way. If you're going to be doing like fragrance and stuff, then maybe the type of train case that's gonna work best for you is going to be where it's the boxes that stack together and snap together, where it's more cavernous. You have to remove one box to get to the next box, to get to the next box, but if you're selling full products then you could be able to label the front of each of those boxes as to what's in there um, and then be able to disassemble with your clients and say in here I have shower gel and here I have my bath oil and so on and so forth for me those cases don't work because again I'm focusing on the, on the beauty products and I don't want to have to undo all those those things for the, the offices and the places I'm going to want to see it quick so mine allows me with the drawers to open it pull them open what do you want what do you need and show them right off the bat if you're going to clients' homes, having that other type of case where you can unsnap things or a rolling thing that has the extra items in it, then that might benefit you to sell uh, larger items like the bath oil and shower washes and gift sets and things like that. So um, just think about it before you, you make the purchase. You don't have to spend tons of money 
um, and stock a bunch of products to get going with this. Start with a basket. Start with a small bag that you just carry cash and carry. Um, you know, for mascaras and glazeware and a few little other makeup products, it's gonna help you first get out of that comfort zone to start doing it. Then you're gonna get the excitement of, oh my gosh, I just sold all five of my mascaras. You'll buy more. And then your customers will be like, what else you got? And then you begin to add to it and it doesn't have to seem so daunting. So start small and you can move your way up. And uh, that way it's affordable for everybody. You don't feel like you're gonna have a bunch of stuff that you can't sell. And um, I'm telling you, I really, really feel um, that this is such a great way for a lot of reps to really get these products um, into your customers' hands. And again, whatever category you choose or you want a little bit of potluck of everything, that's up to you. Um, like I said, I stick to the beauty, but then I do have that extra cart in my car that carries, you know, certain items. Like, for example, real quick before, before I go, um, I carried the scissors that we just had in the uh, Avon Living book. In my beauty cart, there was a place for me just to kind of stick it. I said, oh, by the way, we have these coming out. They're magnetic. And I showed them. And that's getting me orders because it's just one little item that I put in there plus the So Very Sophia. So that was two ways I could kind of cross category a little bit off the makeup. But of course, I'm still giving the book. I'm still showing things in the Avon Living and saying this is coming and this is, you know, or... Um, the light up pumpkin, I'll get the batteries in that and I'll probably bring that around, like carry a little bag with my car and say, by the way, you've got to see this gorgeous pumpkin and sell that along with the beauty. So nobody said that just because you're doing beauty that you can't still bring around a few seasonal items here and there uh, to sell and get those orders. So get creative. I can't, I'm hearing so much from so many of you about getting excited about doing this type of thing and I'm glad uh, that um, you found this inspirational and you know each day that I bring it out and I get a new order You know, that's why I'm sharing with you. It's not to be boastful. It's not to be you know, like it's, it's more just to be inspiration to say look guys This really works and today again another customer another 40 something dollars um, from one person out of the beauty cart So it really does work. So I hope you guys will get out there and do it comment like and make sure you subscribe and share with your teams I want uh, these videos to be valuable to help you and your teams grow and if you find value in that then please do like comment and subscribe um, and uh, if you have ideas and things that you would like me to share or something that I have not made clear um, you know message me and say hey I would love a video on this to tell me how you're doing this and I'd be happy to try to pull together a video for you um, and explain that and share with you so you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you guys soon happy Avoning bye